Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion according to the Book of Common Prayer. You may wish to have some bread and wine ready so that when we get to the communion you can partake of it. In case you don't know me, my name is Margaret. I'm a retired priest working in the parish of All Saints, Wellington with St Catherine's Eiter. So let us be still for a moment as we come to our service. We say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And we say together that collect of purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love one another, unworthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Lord, summary of the law. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God <clears throat> with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and thou dost dispose and turn them as seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee, so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth thy servant, our Queen and Governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works, she may ever seek thy honour and glory, and study to preserve thy people, committed to her charge, in wealth, peace and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this fourth Sunday in Epiphany. O God, who knowest us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers, that by reason of the frailty of our nature we cannot always stand upright, grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Kim is now going to be giving our reading from St Matthew's Gospel. This morning's reading is taken from Matthew 13, verses 10 to 17. Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to him who has will, more be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, You shall indeed hear, but never understand, and you shall indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears have heavy are heavy of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should perceive with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn for me to heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I say to you, Many prophets and righteous men longed to see what you see, and did not see it, 
and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Kim. So let's just pray. Father, as we gather around your word, may we be listening to your Holy Spirit speaking to us. May we hear what it said and be willing to listen. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the chapter starts at the parable of the sir, probably a parable with which you're very familiar. And then after the section which Kim read, there's an explanation of of the parable. Then the rest of the parables in this chapter are on the kingdom of God. The reading starts with the disciples saying, why do you speak to them in parables? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought why Jesus used that method of teaching? And up to this point, the parables have always been um, illustrations, meanings which are basically self-evident from the context in which they're spoken. And he now goes on speaking parables to the unbelieving multitude and explains their meanings to the disciples in private. Well, first of all, why parables? How do you react when you hear them? I think we all like stories. Perhaps even more at this sort of time. Perhaps more books are being read. People listening more to stories. But we need to enter into the parables to recognise God at work in everyday life. And I believe that parables actually make us think. We discover new things. Perhaps it changes our perspective. And I want you to think perhaps of some parables. Perhaps you know, I think particularly of the parables in Luke chapter 15, there are three parables there which are about lost things. The lost sheep, the lost coin and the lost son. Or as many people would know it, the prodigal son. And in each one of them we have a search for something that's lost. And to me that just speaks so much of God reaching out. Reaching out to discover his lost people. And there are so many of them today, aren't there? And look at the state of the world. If only we were a godly, a godly world, what a different place it would be. But God loves us so much. He goes to so much trouble reaching out to us. And that lovely picture in the prodigal son of the father running, which a Middle Eastern man wouldn't do, running to meet his son. And so parables are basically... They're what we call a participle form, participant form of teaching and educating. It was a very novel form of teaching because it was unlike the, what the, how the religious leaders have taught. They taught that God only manifested himself only in the strict obedience of the law, which is when we see, listen to them, we realise how, how far away they were from knowing God. But it also tells us how much we've got to listen So that is why he taught in parables. They do draw you in, hopefully, and if you're willing to be changed, you can be changed. But then, after the question, he says to them, Do you have been given the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to them it has not been given? I find that quite hard, and I did struggle a lot with this. And I turn to the translation called The Message, which is written very much in colloquial English. And I just want to read part of it. The disciples came up and asked, Why do you tell stories? Jesus replied, You have been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. Not everybody has this gift, this insight. It hasn't been given to them. And this is the important bit. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, The insights and understandings flow freely. But if there is no readiness, any sense of receptivity soon disappears. That is why I tell stories, to create readiness, to nudge the people towards receptive insight. In their present state, they can stare till doomsday and not see it. Listen till they're red in the face and not get it. I don't want Isaiah's forecast repeated if ever again. And that's it, isn't it? It's about having ready hearts. If you think about 
or perhaps some of you are gardeners that and are farmers that you prepare the soil before you seed the soil the, sow the seeds the preparation is important so Jesus is saying that basically he's trying to prepare the heart so people will listen to his message sadly not all hearts want to be prepared we think of that parable of the sower actually and the different soils that the, the seed f- falls on and perhaps you may know you may be preparing for friends and family praying that they will receive the message and just feeling so sad because their heart seems so hard. And I think of that passage in Exodus where Moses and Aaron were speaking to Pharaoh and we have that Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And sadly that is happens with some people. They just seem to get harder and harder hearts. They don't want to listen. Perhaps it's the challenge of the message because if they accept it, they've got to say what they thought before was wrong. And they've got to change and most people don't want to change. They don't want to give up some of the things they're doing. So Jesus was trying to repair people's hearts but not all of them were there. And if you think about some of the untruths that go around, I think particularly the last president and one of the things he was saying initially I think was the virus wasn't, wasn't, wasn't there, wasn't coming. And Sadly, people listen to untruths, and I believe that's what's true with the gospel, that people listen to wrong interpretations. They're not wishing to really listen to the voice of God. So, in Jesus' day, they were looking forward to the Messiah, but they were expecting the Messiah on their terms. If you think about the beginning of um, Acts, where Jesus is talking to the disciples immediately before his resurrection, they sort of say, oh, is this when the kingdom of Israel will be restored? They still hadn't quite got it. And so very much in Jesus' day, they were looking forward to a Messiah who would be a glorious king, who would release them from the yoke of the Romans. Jesus didn't fit into the picture for most people of what the Messiah could be. What about us? What's your picture of Jesus? How do you see him? Is he someone to, you've got a problem, so you'll pray to him? Or is he someone who you talk to fairly frequently? In fact, you try to find time each day to pray to him, to listen to him, to read his word, to try and understand, particularly in these very difficult times, where is God in all this? Trying to understand. And I believe as we do, we do believe, the more we believe, the stronger our faith becomes. And the more we believe, the more we do see God at action, perhaps in very small things. He's perhaps not doing the thing that we want to do, we just ask to get rid of this virus, but he's working through it, I do believe, particularly through those people who've worked so hard to get a vaccination and those who are now manning the vaccination centres. So, do we read our Bible to learn more about him? to learn more about how precious the kingdom of God is, how much God wants to change our lives, transform them, so we become the people that he's created us to be. How open is my heart to really listening to God, to hear him speak? Do I expect him to speak? I pray that each one of us do. Before you read the Bible, Do you ask the Holy Spirit to speak through the readings? And it it does strike me how amazing that if we actually open our hearts, that actually we can read things. Perhaps you'll read something we've read a lot of many times and suddenly it speaks to us in a different way. We see something different in it because the Holy Spirit has opened our, our hearts, opened our eyes, opened our minds to hear God speaking. Do you expect to get something? from a reading or do you just do a reading shut the bible and that's it do you allow it to permeate your mind i pray that we'll be people whose hearts are not hardened whose hearts are getting soft and softer that we may know more about the lord jesus so let's pray heavenly father we thank you that you've called us to be your people help us to open our hearts more and more 
that we may be truly open to the seeds you're wanting to sow, that we may be changed, we may be agents of change in our society. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's join together in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all words, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitted on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we're going to sing before, as we come to communion, Take My Life and Let It Be. Oh 
pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here on earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to all those watching here present, that with meek hearts and due reverence they may hear and receive the holy, thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech you of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye that do truly and earnest repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. And we say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking must jostly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all that travail on a heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also, hear also what St Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith, 
If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. We say together, we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy priests of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, when the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it, and gave it to his Sabbath, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto un everlasting life. Drink this and remember that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful. And we say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries, 
with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us. And they are very members in corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of thy most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and to all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And we join together in the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and in earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each one of you, now and always. Amen. <laughs>